So today we're on um, array two, either 24, given an array of integers, we want to return true if the array contains a two next to a two or a four next to a four. So you could think, well, okay, um, I'm going to obviously have to iterate through the array and iterating through the array uh, will essentially get me to a for loop, something that looks like this. And it said, well, if there's either a two next to a two or a four next to a four, um, I want to return true. So you could think, okay, well, if let me let me try to knock this out in the least amount of lines possible. And so you could say, okay, well, if if nums of i um, is equal to two and nums of i plus one, that is of course the next element incrementing i by one, which of course is the reference for the element, um, and nums of i plus one is equal to two, or nums of uh, uh, i is equal to four and nums of i plus one is equal to four, uh, then uh, we'll have, we'll re just, we'll, we'll return true. And um, yeah, I mean, that should, uh, that should take care of it. And after we're outside the for loop, if of course it wasn't set to true, we'll return false. And you would think, I mean, in terms of pseudocode, if you, if, you were to, if you were to think of this as pseudocode for your problem, to some extent, to some minute extent, then you could almost be given the impression that um, this code resembles what this is saying. And you could say, well, I want to return true, which I'm doing here um, without the keyword. I want to return true if the array contains a two next to a two, which is what I've said here, or a four next to a four, which is what I've returned here. Now, the thing that you some people gloss over, or even I've glossed over, in fact, while trying the question on my first attempt, was that it says, but not both. So the but not both part really means that, um, the but not both means that you, you can't have both of them. So if we were to return this here, well, actually let's put a minus one because we're, we're incrementing by one in the code. And so we don't wanna walk off the edge of the array. But if I run this here, you'll see we get plenty of them right, but we get some of them wrong. And some of them are wrong, um, because uh, essentially because this operator here, this logical operator, um, it essentially, if nums of i is equal to two and nums of i plus one is equal to two, if, if, if two and two are together, then it will return true. And if nums of i is equal to four and nums of i plus one is equal to four, that is of course, if four and four are together, then we will also return true. However, if they are both in the same array, that is that is to say, if two and two are together in the same array and four and four are together in the same array, then we're also returning true. That's not what we wanna do. The question says, but not both. So you'll see here that we're getting a lot of greens, but wherever we're not getting a lot of greens, there happen to be two fours and two twos together um, in the same array. So that's something we would wanna return false for, right? So this approach um, is really just not an efficient approach. So you could say, okay, let me go ahead and sort of do this the hard way. Um, you know, you could say, okay, well, I'm going to have um, two for loops, right? And um, this, uh, so this for loop, I'm gonna make a for loop and this for loop will essentially keep track of whether or not we have two um, twos, okay? And it, it, for loop which will return true if there are two twos. And then you can say, okay, um, I'll, I'll make that for loop and then I'll have another for loop uh, which will return true if there are four fours. And so by now you'd have uh, you'd essentially have two Boolean expressions for two twos and four fours, which is of course ranging from true to false. And you could use if statements to judge whether they are both, to judge three things, whether they are both true, they are both false, or, well, you could say that if they're both true, 
you would want to return false, right? In this case, if they're both true, you'd want to return false. And if one or the other is true, you'd want to, if one or the other is true and the other is false, you'd want to return true. So this for loop would look something like this. We would just iterate through the length of the array. And in this array, essentially you will be saying, okay, if you'll have that one fragment of, of the long piece of code that we had before, if nums of i is equal to two, and uh, let's see, nums of i plus one is equal to two, then we'll set two to, well, we'll set double two true, which is of course a Boolean uh, variable that I'd wanna have, where we're gonna start it off with false. And if, if of course this condition is met, then it'll set it to true. And um, yeah, so if that, if that is the case, then it'll set it to true. And then if we'll, we'll have another for loop just specializing for our our four double four and in here we could just say well if uh, if nums of i is equal to four and nums of i plus one is equal to four then we will say okay double four is equal to true and then of course we'll have a boolean called double four, and we'll set that to false at first. And if, of course, the condition is satisfied, then we'll update the value for double four, updating it to true. And after we're out of, so we by now we'd have two Boolean values, um, which would sense whether there are two fours or two twos, or a double two or a double four. And you say, okay, well, if, if both the double four and the double two are true, then just return false because they can't both be true. Um, otherwise, now you'd think, so if you, if you say otherwise return true, then this gives the impression that, um, then this would return true for each and every case besides the case that double four and double two are true. Uh, in other words, if they, if they don't exist at all, then it will return true. Um, so you'd wanna inefficiently try to specify each of those cases. You'd say, okay, well, else, um, else if, uh, let's see, else if double four is true, um, then return true. Else if double two is true, then return true. Otherwise return false. I mean, these are, this is just, a, it, um, let's see here. It gives you a favorable outcome. Let's see here what it says. I mean, it, see, running this code uh, would probably give you a favorable outcome, but of course we're walking off the edge of the array. So we wanna make sure that we don't do that in either loop. So it gives you, I mean, it gives you a favorable outcome, but just think about how inefficient this is. I mean, we've used two loops to try to make this judgment and we've used, I mean, look at what we're doing here. This is just terrible. It's a terrible way to approach the, the question. So, um, it, you know, how do we, how do we do this? So whenever you have two for loops, always ask yourself, can I do it? Can I do it in one for loop? So let's try to not do it this way, right? Although that's a way, that's an, that's an option you could take. Let's try to do the same thing in one for loop. So we have one for loop here, which is returning true if there are two twos. Well, can we, can we instead um, merge uh, the fact that we want to return true if there are double, if, if double four is true? Well, uh, I guess you could, right? So you could say if nums of i is equal to four and nums of i plus one is equal to four, then double four is equal to true. 
And then after you're done with your for loop here, you could come out and you could say, okay, if if nums of i or sorry, if double four was equal to true, or you could just say double four and double two is equal to true, then return true or return false because we don't want two, um, we don't want both of them to be true obviously because if they're both true, then there's both a double two and a double four in the same array and we don't want that to happen. So if there's a double four and double two in the same array, um, and if they're both true, then we'll set, set it to false. Otherwise, um, if double four, um, if double, so you can see here that we're gonna have to keep going into the same um, frenzy, so to speak, of trying to, um, of trying to specify each and every case. Now there is um, an exclusional ex an exclusional or operator, which looks something like this, right? And this one here, what this does is it returns true if either one is if either one is false but not the other, or if if either one is true but not the other. In other words, it's only going to go inside this if condition, only if one of them is true, which is exactly what we want. So using this operator here. Um, would be really beneficial. The the or operator, you can see that it sort of, if both of them are true, then we'll go inside the condition. But this one, if only one of them is true, we'll, we'll go inside uh, the condition. So if only one of them is true, we'll return true. Um, otherwise, by default, um, you know, we would, uh, well, we'd have to specify it, we would return false. And you'd see that we're getting a proper answer here. Um, but uh, can we make this any more efficient than we already have? Probably. Um, we could, uh, if we're only returning once, if we're only uh, sort of judging one statement, then we can return the statement itself. You'll see that that works for us as well. So this isn't that, um, if you think about it, it's not that many lines um, of code. Right, as opposed to before, where we were sort of, um, as opposed to before, where we had, um, where we had a lot of extra information. So, this would be uh, the solution for either twenty-four.